thank you for inviting me here today. And I want to start this uh, by introducing myself a little bit. I was born in a western part of independent Ukraine. And uh, I studied in Kyiv, in Prague, um, and then lived for six years in the U.S., after which I returned back to Ukraine, where I now live. In those years, I was very lucky to meet a great group of friends with whom, in 2014, I have co-founded the organization that I'm representing here today, uh, Razum. Razum, in Ukrainian, means together, and just one out of many organizations uh, the revolution, in which revolution of, of dignity brought together different generations of people and walks of life. But at the same time, all of them share very similar values and want to see the future of Ukraine as a successful, independent, and prosperous country that is a part of democratic Western world and shares its values, is based on freedom, love, respect, responsibility a nation that could enjoy the, and contribute to the benefits that such way of life will bring with it. We understand that all of that does not come for free. So for the last eight years, we have been working really hard to root out what stopped us from getting where we wanted to be, uh, getting rid of things like corruption, security issues, injustice in our courts. Uh, at the same time, we were discovering and telling our story um, telling the world who we really are, and I, I, I believe we really succeeded in that uh, in many ways. And today, many of you here understand um, why the things that I mentioned are important, uh, but there is one man that sees that as a threat, a man, maybe even a child, who is incapable of understanding freedom, love, respect, responsibility, Democratic Ukraine was never and never will be a threat to Russian people. But it is, it, by its existence, is a death threat to Putinism. A man that only knows how to rule his country by fear, because that's only one thing he understands well. Uh, as, as, as we are here right now, many Ukrainians are dying, um, as Russia is deliberately targeting civilians in cities like Mariupol, Sumy, Kharkiv, Chernihiv, Kyiv, as well as numerous smaller towns and villages that some of which are completely destroyed now. Because of the sole existence of these people is making that one man feel so threatened that he's not coming out of his bunker for weeks now. Russian soldiers are targeting those who cannot fight back because they already know that this war cannot be won by them. Ukraine right now is fighting for those values that many in the Western world have started to forget about. And Ukraine is reminding us how important it is for us to overcome our differences and come together to protect these values that our world is built on. Was the extent to which Ukraine has united the Western world and reminded it about the cost of the real cost of freedom. I do not see any possible outcome where after we win, uh, Ukraine is not part of European Union, or maybe even now. Today I want to urge you to come together, stand united, and do anything that you possibly can to support Ukraine in its struggle for freedom as it is fighting for all of us. Continue to impose sanctions and invest in mechanisms to enforce and control them. Impose embargoes on Russian oil and gas. Support Ukraine with military and humanitarian aid, including air defensive weapons, and do not be paralyzed by the same fear that is cause of this war. And once the war is won, all of the people responsible for it should be persecuted. Economic losses or loss of political rating is nothing compared to the loss of Ukrainian lives, of Ukrainian innocent men, women, children, of lives of these people and, and in this unprovoked, meaningless war. And, I, and I, I, don't want, I just want to underline all of this that I just said with one line. United we will endure. Razum 
democracy will prevail. I thank you very much.